Hi there folks. In this video we're going to have a look at a Lee bullet mold. And this is a mold that Lee has had in their catalog for a very long time. And it is a very basic style of mold. It's actually a really good mold for a beginner into cast bullets to start with. And it's the Lee TL358158-2R. And this is a mold which is meant primarily for 38 Special, 357 Magnum, that sort of a thing. And the TL stands for tumble lube. So this is a bullet that is meant to be used with Lee's tumble lube system. So these are available online and from your local gun shop. And like all Lee products, quite a reasonably priced item. So 358 diameter is uh, the spec and 158 grain for the weight. And it's a round nose style of bullet. So let's uh, open this up and have a look. And this is the new style of Lee blocks. Or at least it should be. As you can see we've got the new style of Lee blocks. Got that uh, kind of an F extruded pattern to them. Let's see who inspected this one. We have uh, Lucille. Okay. I don't think I've had a mold from inspected by Lucille before. Let's see what it looks like. Get the sticker off here. And uh, in keeping with Lee's current style of mold marking, we've got the uh, 358158 marking on the top there, which is a little better than what they used to do. They used to put the catalog number on there, and unless you had a catalog, it was kind of hard to tell what exactly you had in your hands unless you could identify the actual blocks. We have LH here, which is for left-hand thread. These uh, sprue plates are held on with a left-hand thread. So of course, like all the Lee molds, it comes, well, not all the Lee molds, all the two, one and two cavity Lee molds come with the attached handles. These are also a little bit updated from the old style handles. They've uh, got a longer metal piece on it here to reinforce, which is good because the old ones were quite a bit shorter. They used to come loose and they used to crack. So this is definitely a product improvement on Lee's part. So kind of nice, you don't have to buy any handles to go with these, they're ready to go right out of the box. So you can see that the mold blocks are out of aluminum, as are all the Lee mold blocks. And we've got a little bit of a uh, swirl pattern on the top here from the machining, which would affect some venting. A steel sprue cutter. One thing it's uh, important to check with these sprue cutters is that there's no burrs on them, because should you have any burrs, they will score the top of the mold blocks. These ones seem pretty good. You should be able to feel any burrs with your fingers. Uh, some guys will take these off and kind of polish them a little bit to make them work a little slicker. I've never done that. You basically, uh, just like I said, check them for burrs and away you go. So, the new style of lead blocks have alignment dowels and steel bushings, so these are steel inserts in the blocks, much superior to the old style of uh, strangely shaped blocks that Lee had that had mating surfaces which would gall because they rubbed against each other and all that stuff, so this is a much better system. Anyway, you can see the mole cavities themselves there. So we've got the very small grooves machined into these. And I believe these are a lathe board style of mold. So these would be done on a CNC lathe. And uh, so the machine basically can replicate these in various configurations. So anyway, those these seem to be pretty well machined. I don't notice any particular uh, burrs on them. They look pretty good, actually. And once again, we've got that swirled pattern machined on the block faces to affect some uh, venting. So, yeah, these look pretty darn decent. So, what remains to be done now is to get the uh, machining and cutting oils cleaned off these. As you can see, there's some, uh, there's some oils that come off on your hands when you handle these at first. So it's important to remove all that oil and so forth off the blocks before you start casting because they won't cast worth a darn if there's oil on them. You'll get wrinkles and bubbles and all that sort of stuff. Some people use carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner. Um, generally speaking, I find just uh, really hot soapy water works well and an old toothbrush and just scrub the blocks down thoroughly and rinse them 
several times, and uh, that generally will do After the job. After you've got your uh, blocks degreased, it's important to uh, lubricate them. The uh, critical place to lubricate them is underneath this uh, sprue hinge. I like to use a little dab of this uh, anti-seize compound, just a small amount underneath there. I'll also rub the, uh, the back of the sprue plate and the top of the blocks with a graphite pencil. Put a little layer of graphite on there. That helps to uh, lubricate the top when the blocks are opening and closing. And a little tiny dab of anti-seize on the alignment pins is probably not a bad idea either. Obviously you don't want enough of that product on there where it will migrate out into the cavities. And with all the products they recommend that you smoke the cavities with uh, a match or a butane lighter before you use them. Um, I would uh, recommend trying casting with them first without smoking them to see if they fill out well and if they don't there's really no need to smoke them but you know sometimes smoking them just the one time is enough and uh, from then on in there's enough oxide and so forth built up after you start using them that uh, you don't need to smoke them but you know if you're not getting good fill out on the bullets it never hurts to smoke the, the mold cavities. Basically the mold uh, aluminum molds conduct heat so quickly that uh, it can be difficult for bullets to fill out and what smoking them does is it builds up a layer of carbon on there which insulates the lead in the cavity from the mold blocks and lets it fill out before it hardens up so that's essentially what the, uh, the smoking does to them. Lee does not recommend the use of any spray-on uh, mold products like the uh, graphite mold products so anyway I've never used any of those so I really can't comment one way or the other Anyway, let's uh, get these things prepped and cast some bullets with it. Let's have a look at the mold in action. I've got it heated up pretty well at this point in time and I've been casting a pile of bullets. Got my Lee 20 pound bottom pour pot going there. One trick I use to keep the casting rhythm up to a reasonable pace is to use a wet pad of uh, cotton fabric here. Just set the mold down on that briefly between casts to let the uh, blocks cool down a bit because if you cast too fast with aluminum blocks you can overheat the blocks and you'll end up with uh, the lead sticking to the sprue cutter and or the top of the blocks. So I found this mold to be quite a good one. It drops the bullets fairly easily and it fills out quite uh, quite well also. So my usual uh, sort of rhythm for casting here is to fill the mold, set it on top of the, uh, the damp or wet cotton pad, and when it's cooled off, break the sprue, give the hinge pin a tap, the bullets fall out, close the mold handles up, refill the mold, back over to the cotton pad again, take my sprue from the previous and drop it back in the pot because it's still quite hot metal, there's not much point in letting it cool off, might as well throw it back in the pot. Make a clean spot for the bullets to come out of the mold, cut the sprue, dump the bullets, you can see that they come out really quite easily, and repeat until you get uh, the desired quantity of bullets or you run into lead or you get bored out of your mind, one or the other. Um, like I said, this has been a really a joy to use this mold, and it hasn't required much in the way of smoking. You can see I smoked the mold when we first started using it, however most of that has worn off. You can see that there's almost no uh, soot left in the cavities themselves, or a little bit on the blocks there. But despite that, uh, the mold has continued to fill out quite well. So. Here's a, uh, an example bullet, still hot to the touch, but you can see that it's filled out uh, quite well. So you don't necessarily have to smoke the cavities of these Lee molds. It can be advantageous with certain specific individual molds, you'll have some, sometimes you'll have a problem mold. But this one has been, <coughs> excuse me, this one has been excellent. So yesterday I cast a bunch of these uh, bullets up and I lubricated them with the Lee liquid Alox. Quite an easy thing to do. 
spread them out in a piece of wax paper to dry overnight and here's what you end up so, it's a random sampling of what the finished bullets look like and you don't need a whole lot of that liquid alox on them you just need a very light coat a lot of guys use this stuff and they really overdo the amount that they put on them now that depends of course on the velocity level and the alloy but for uh, modest loads which I'm going to be using these for 38 special there's no need to really overdo it with the liquid alox these actually might even have a little more than is necessary but there's an example of how much is on them they are a little bit tacky yet because it's not that long since they were done let's see what these things come out to for diameter so these are coming out with the alox on them to about 360 now that might sound like a little bit big but the uh, the act of actually seating these in the cartridge case will probably size them down by about a thousand the neck tension will probably flatten those uh, micro grooves out a little bit and uh, Basically, a little bigger is usually better with cast bullets. So let's uh, weigh a couple of these. I've got the electronic scale set up here. I'm not entirely sure how well this uh, display is going to show up on the video. It's quite clear to me here in person, but on the uh, camera display it looks a little bit faded out. But anyway, this particular bullet, 159.9. And let's try another one. 160.8 and these are cast from a mixture of wheel weights and range scrap 160.4 so these are coming in right around the 160 grain mark 160.3 so a little bit heavier than the specified weight but that's because I'm using an alloy which contains more lead and less uh, antimony and less tin and that one there is 158.8. So, reasonable variance for a cast bullet. Um, it's hard to be right on the money with cast bullets because they tend to be some air voids inside them which you cannot see. Anyway, that's certainly acceptable enough for the purpose I'm going to be putting them to. And we're only, you know, a couple of grains off the advertised weight. So we should be able to use the uh, standard load data for these. Here is the final product. This is a box of 38 Special loaded with the Lee Tumbleu bullet. I've used the uh, top micro groove band as a crimping groove in this case. And uh, these will chamber freely in uh, my Smith & Wesson without any issues at all. One nice thing about these Lee bullets is they save you a lot of labor. Basically cast a bullet, lubricate it with the Lee Liquid Alox, let it dry and then load it. For the most part those molds will produce bullets which do not require any sizing. So basically if the loaded round will chamber in your gun without any resistance it is uh, probably good to go. Unless of course you get a mold which is vastly undersized in which case you won't be able to use it but that was uh, not the case here. The bullet drops out at 359, 360, which is perfectly fine for most 38 Special 357 Magnum. And I was able to load these in without doing any further work, so quite a labor saving uh, thing. Anyway, all that remains now is to take these out to the range and give them a try. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you in the next video.